Hello, and welcome to Nomadic Diaries, the re-entry series. I'm Doreen Cumberford, the host. And I'm Linda Mueller, the co-host. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Repatriation or Repad Diaries. And thank you for being here. My name is Doreen Cumberford, and I am with the wonderful Linda Mueller. Hi, Linda. Hi, Doreen. It's always fun to see you. Can't wait to see what we get into today. Yeah. Well, today is, is, is a Monday, and a theme on the on Monday is the theme for the week. We are going to do our very best to tie the entire process for this week into one simple subject for our listeners. Do you remember what that subject is, Linda? Well, I don't think it's very simple in some cases, but <laughs> visioning. Yes. Visioning for your repatriation. Visioning for your repatriation. Now, Linda, what I've noticed over the years is when I have talked to friends, colleagues, and clients about the subject of repatriation, I don't know, is it just the people I've talked to, or do you find that we're not very clear about it? Yeah, I don't think we, as an international community, are very clear about it, to be honest. I think there are exceptions to that, because some people are just programmed that way. But I think, in general, we're so wrapped up in the process, the logistics of repatriation, that we don't take the time to really think through the vision that we would like to create. Exactly. And uh, there are many, many quotations on the subject of vision, but, you know, without vision, we we have no future in, in many respects. And so I have noticed that also. I've noticed that we have this picture or we're going home, but it's not necessarily well described. And we don't have a picture of what the actual process and the sensations will be. So visioning, what is a vision? Let's talk about what a vision is. A vision is essentially a vivid description of your desired future state. So that means it it is a picture in our head. Now, if I say microphone, you don't see the words M-I-C-R-O-P-H-O-N-E, do you? You see the picture of a microphone. Right. And I think sometimes we're really, some of us are guilty of uh, living so much in the moment, being so steeped in the novelty of having lived overseas. We have changed so much, but we don't have an awareness of how much we've changed or how much people back home have changed. So a vision is really, it's going beyond just setting a goal. It's an actual photograph or picture in our head. Do you know people who've had vision boards who've done this, Linda? Not specific to repatriation. Mm. I I have worked with uh, quite a few people, um, expats overseas. In fact, for like 15 years, we would do a, a visioning session with expats when we, when we lived overseas between uh, Japan and Saudi Arabia. And, Great idea. Um, yeah, I, I I really think it helped a lot. I mean, I, I could see um, people's ideas one year and maybe five years later or 10 years later. You know, there's the out picturing of some of the things, not everything, but something that they had on a vision board. So a vision actually goes, it's, it's a description of our future state, number one. It's beyond a goal. It's a comprehensive picture. And the other thing is it has a job to do. It has a task of engaging our emotions and our imagination. And so it's really important. So this week, we're going to be tying everything that we do this week as best we can to the subject of vision of visions. You know, you're making me think about my own repatriations. And the one that I will share is that the first time we moved back from Tokyo, it was just my husband and myself, and we had an opportunity to stay in Japan, but we chose not to for a variety of reasons. And the one vision I set for myself was that I was not going to be miserable. Mm. Oh, wow. 
because Uh we were moving back to a place that I had not enjoyed living in the first time. And I said to myself, I'm choosing to move back here. I'm a different person. I'm in a different phase of life now. Like, let's make the best of it. And it was not an easy repatriation, but because I had set that tone for the repatriation and I had envisioned what that was going to look like, I was going to get a job. We were going to buy a house. I mean, I had sort of the big picture things laid out in my head. And what I, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but what I find really interesting is that I am married to a man who was from the place we were living Mm. and it was the center of the universe for him. But we moved back. He was the one that belly ached about a lot of things because he went back, as you talked about, expecting things to be like they were when we left, expecting everyone to be like they were when we were home on home leave. And it wasn't like that. And I don't want to give away too many details because it's his story. Sure, sure. But it was such, we laugh about it now because I'm the one that was miss positive and it wasn't toxic positivity, but I just was making the best and I was realistic and I had a, my vision for what I wanted to create. Less than a year and a half later, we ended up moving unexpectedly. And so <laughs> that was like the next phase of the journey. But having that vision saved me. I And counting on a vision and having a vision like that to lean on, it's like having a walking stick when you're really wobbly. It, it, I find that having a very a clearer vision and the clearer it is, the better. So let's talk about why visioning works. Visioning works because it aligns what's happening now in our conscious minds with subconscious concepts that we want to align up with in the future. And so sometimes the now doesn't look like what we would prefer in the future. So when I work with people, the first thing I say is, what would you love? What would you love? And we drill that. We actually drill that question a thousand times on multiple multiple subjects is, what would you love? Because if we really want to be authentic, we have to align the picture we're seeing in our head with the thing that we want in our hearts and the way that we feel in our gut. And that's the way that visioning works is it's an alignment of all three of those situations, not only uh, physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it all has to line up. So Visions uh, create um, motivation, focus, and prioritization, and they allow you to take the emotions out of decisions that are small decisions right now, because you may be making decisions now that are not the great grand leaps that you want to take, but if they are in the direction that you want to go in, that's as long as you're moving forward, that's what counts. So Let's go on a little bit about specific details you want to include in your vision. So I recommend doing something called sensorization. What do I want to smell? What do I want to taste? What do I want to hear? What do I want to see? What do I want to look at? When we moved to Mexico, one of the things that I was really looking forward to was having more color in my life. Because the women and the men sometimes, but generally there's just a lot more color around you. And I found that that's a natural lift. Another thing was I really wanted to have access to natural, simple, healthy foods that were not necessarily so processed. And so that fulfilled my vision And Mexico fulfilled my vision of how that would be. That's just some ideas of things you can, ways you can censorize it. Well, I just think what makes so much sense about this idea of using visioning for your repatriation is just that the mind seeks Mm -hmm. what it knows, like what you're, what you're thinking, the mind looks for. So if you're looking, if you're thinking negative things, the mind tries to find, I'm forgetting what that theory is, but the mind looks for what ways to justify what you're thinking. But if you have your vision, then the mind will be looking for those things to help you make that vision a reality. Yep. Let's talk about what it shouldn't contain. It shouldn't contain 
limitations, as you were talking about, or assumptions. We have to assume that absolutely anything is possible. It shouldn't contain self-doubt of any sort or any language that is doubting. I usually work with my clients to listen to their vision because when you when people read it to you, you can kind of hear where there's a little bit of doubt. You can hear where there's a little bit of questioning going on. Wouldn't you agree? Do you find that? Definitely. Yep. I've I've done vision board with clients before, but just not for this application. So once again, I'm learning from you, Dorian. <laughs> I'm going to shift. <laughs> and there's there's no, also, there's no um, excessive specificity about try, about timeframes. I want to tell you the story about one client who, it, this is very recent for me. I worked with him in 2011. He was a photographer and he was building a business and he didn't have a relationship. He was building a business and he opened a gallery eventually after like, First of all, he got married. Then he found a way that he could print his photographs on metal. Then he decided I could sell these great, big, beautiful metal prints. And some of them are three by fives. Then he opened the first gallery. And just last week, he had the in the little town that I happened to be visiting because my daughter got married here. Just just a, a, a place where the stars have crossed. And um, he was having his second gallery opening. Now, I remember his vision was written out. It was clear. He listened to it in the morning. He taped it. He listened to it in the morning. He listened to it at night. He programmed. And that's what it is. It's kind of like a program. And the programming that we put on the computer of our mind really has a lot to, to do with this. So... I just happen to be a big believer in visioning and starting with visioning is usually my favorite thing to come to uh, achieve something. How about you? I think it's an excellent idea. I mean, I do vision boards for myself Mm -hmm. and I even break them down on a quarterly basis because there's certain things on my phone, which it's on my screensaver. I mean, these are Mm, tricks that I've taught my clients because, uh, yes. you know, there's, we, we want to make the vision board. If, if that's the tool we're using right. an actionable and active thing. We, I always say to clients, like, we don't want it to go behind a cabinet and collect dust. Like what do we need to do to make it live? Exactly. Make part of your life to make it a living type. Yeah. Tool. Yep. Yep. And I think also um, reading it out and recording it and listening to your voice, saying it back and saying it as if it's in the present. Mm -hmm. So it's, okay, let's think three years ahead and let's describe where you are in three years ahead. I am now living this life. I am seeing this. I am with this person. I have created this. I am surrounded by this. And but speaking it in the present is a way to just kind of trick our subconscious mind into believing it. I love that. That's another thing I haven't done is the recording. And I think it's a great idea. Yes. Well, I'm not always, I have to say that's not my strong suit, but it has been the strong suit of many of my male clients, many of them. And I don't know why, but they've just been very, very powerful at that. I guess the accessibility to technology and just the willingness to take that on. So just finally, to to tie this up, how to create a vision, specifically for repatriation. I think we have this idea, you may not be going home to exactly the place that you left, but I think it's really important to create yourself in your vision. You know, who, you're the person who, and you're the person who it, it, things will happen and you're not going to tell every story to everyone you you are the person who is such and such and such and such and I think that's just really important to project to describe to censorize it as much as you can because it's a rough and tumble process and do you have any tips for people that are repatriating under a situation with a lot of unknowns on how to handle Mm. visioning Mm. I think focusing on how you want to feel. I think um, focusing on, you know, I want to feel safe. I want to feel 
um, like I'm on track for my dreams in my life. I want to feel, you know, things that you can categorize that are not necessarily an exact picture. Because as we know, how many of us who repatriate go off again overseas? What do you think? What do you, what is the statistic you hear? I know for people in general, it's very high. I think I heard 80 something percent on some a podcast recently, and I had trouble believing it was that high. But as someone who made seven international relocations over 13 years, and that's in and out of the US, but it was mm -hmm. seven over 13 years. I mean, it's it's more probable because you get on that international track and you become, if you're going for your career, or your partner's career, like once you're on that international track, it's easier to stay on it sometimes than to get off of it. Yes. Um, as I know, who someone who uh, repatriated into retirement and that retirement became rewirement to another country. And so I have heard 85%. In fact, there's someone we're going to be interviewing for the series who just told me that he's leaving to go off again after his oh, wow. creation. So I think it's very, very common. So just to tie up, um, how to create a vision is really sit down and dream what you would love. And don't listen to negative Nelly voice who's going to say, well, that's not possible. Or you can't go there and you can't have that. This is just a time to put down and write down and record what might be possible. And use questions to kind of explore what's your ideal scenario? How does that feel? And then write it out, draw it out, record it, um, do a vision board, use photographs, use pictures, use your phone, um, review and refine it regularly. And I mean daily because our, otherwise I, our minds just slip. I think you've been very thorough and I, I hope people are paying attention to the details you shared because that was... Uh very easy to implement type action items that you threw out there. Well, we're trying to make uh, repatriation more healthy and easy by in delivering in by informing, impacting and inspiring everyone out there to have a, a better journey. Closing thoughts, Linda? Well, I would just like to add that for those of you that are thinking, oh, well, I'm not planning on repatriating anytime soon. You might want to still pay attention to the things that we're sharing because it'll help you when and if you do end up repatriating. So to be aware of these types of things in advance will make whenever, if it does come down the path, your repatriation comes to fruition, like it'll just make it easier. Definitely, definitely. So this is Repatriation Repat Diaries. I'm Doreen and I'm signing off with a uh, Masalama and a sayonara. Adios, borrowing your language, your current language. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Yes. Bye bye. <laughs>